The United States presidential election of 1864, the 20th quadrennial presidential election, was held on Tuesday, November 8, 1864. In the midst of the American Civil War, incumbent President Abraham Lincoln of the National Union Party easily defeated the Democratic nominee, former General George B. McClellan, by a wide margin of 221-21 electoral votes, with 55% of the popular vote. For the election, the Republican Party and some Democrats created the National Union Party, especially to attract war Democrats. Despite some intra-party opposition from Salmon Chase and the Radical Republicans, Lincoln won his party's nomination at the 1864 National Union National Convention. Rather than re-nominate Vice President Hannibal Hamlin, the convention selected Andrew Johnson of Tennessee, a war Democrat, as Lincoln's running mate. John C. Fremont ran as the nominee of the Radical Democracy Party, which criticized Lincoln for being too moderate on the issue of racial equality, but Fremont withdrew from the race in September. The Democrats were divided between the Copperheads, who favored immediate peace with the Confederacy, and War Democrats, who wished to continue the war. The 1864 Democratic National Convention nominated McClellan, a War Democrat, but adopted a platform advocating peace with the Confederacy, which McClellan rejected. Despite his early fears of defeat, Lincoln won strong majorities in the popular and electoral vote, partly as a result of the recent Union victory at the Battle of Atlanta. As the Civil War was still raging, no electoral votes were counted from any of the eleven southern states that had joined the Confederate States of America. Lincoln's re-election ensured that he would preside over the successful conclusion of the Civil War. Lincoln's victory made him the first president to win re-election since Andrew Jackson in 1832, as well as the first northern president to ever win re-election. Lincoln was assassinated less than two months into his second term, and he was succeeded by Andrew Johnson, who had to work toward emancipation of all slaves. Because Lincoln was elected on the National Union ticket, as the name the Republican Party used during the Civil War, he is technically the most recent individual outside of the Republican or Democratic parties to win a presidential election. Topic. Background The presidential election of 1864 took place during the American Civil War. According to the Miller Center for the Study of the Presidency, the election was noteworthy for occurring at all, an unprecedented democratic exercise in the midst of a civil war. A group of Republican dissidents who called themselves Radical Republicans formed a party named the Radical Democracy Party and nominated John C. Fremont as their candidate for president. Fremont later withdrew and endorsed Lincoln. In the border states, war Democrats joined with Republicans as the National Union Party, with Lincoln at the head of the ticket. The National Union Party was a temporary name used to attract war Democrats and border state Unionists who would not vote for the Republican Party. It faced off against the regular Democratic Party, including Peace Democrats. Topic. Nominations The 1864 presidential election conventions of the parties are considered below in order of the party's popular vote. Topic: <laughs> National Union Party nomination. National Union candidates: Abraham Lincoln, President of the United States; Ulysses S. Grant, Commanding General from Illinois. Topic. National Union Party Presidential Candidates Gallery Topic. National Union Party Vice Presidential Candidates Gallery Topic. Temporary split in the Republican Party As the Civil War progressed, political opinions within the Republican Party began to diverge. Senators Charles Sumner and Henry Wilson from Massachusetts wanted the Republican Party to advocate constitutional amendments to prohibit slavery and guarantee racial equality before the law. Initially, not all Northern Republicans supported such measures. Democratic leaders hoped that the Radical Republicans would put forth their own ticket in the election. The New York World, particularly interested in undermining the National Union Party, ran a series of articles predicting a delay for the National Union Convention until late in 1864 to allow Fremont time to collect delegates to win the nomination. 
Fremont supporters in New York City established a newspaper called The New Nation, which declared in one of its initial issues that the National Union Convention would be a nonentity. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> National Union Party. Before the election, some war Democrats joined the Republicans to form the National Union Party. With the outcome of the Civil War still in doubt, some political leaders, including Salmon P. Chase, Benjamin Wade, and Horace Greeley, opposed Lincoln's renomination on the grounds that he could not win. Chase himself became the only candidate to contest Lincoln's renomination actively, but he withdrew in March when a slew of Republican officials, including some within the state of Ohio upon whom Chase's campaign depended, endorsed Lincoln for renomination. Lincoln was still popular with most members of the Republican Party, and the National Union Party nominated him for a second term as president at their convention in Baltimore, Maryland, on June 7–8, 1864. The party platform included these goals. Quote, Pursuit of the war until the Confederacy surrendered unconditionally, a constitutional amendment for the abolition of slavery, aid to disabled Union veterans, continued European neutrality, enforcement of the Monroe Doctrine, encouragement of immigration, and construction of a transcontinental railroad. It also praised the use of black troops and Lincoln's management of the war. Andrew Johnson, the former senator from and current military governor of Tennessee, was named as Lincoln's vice presidential running mate. The choice of Andrew Johnson as Lincoln's running mate was a politically calculated move by the Republican Party to ensure the electoral votes of the border states. Others who were considered for the nomination, at one point or another, were former Senator Daniel Dickinson, Major General Benjamin Butler, Major General William Rosecrans, Joseph Holt, and former Treasury Secretary and Senator John Dix. Topic. Democratic Party nomination. Democratic presidential candidates George B. McClellan, general from New Jersey Thomas H. Seymour, former governor of Connecticut Topic. Democratic Party candidates gallery Topic. Democratic Party vice presidential candidates gallery The Democratic Party was bitterly split between War Democrats and Peace Democrats, a group further divided among competing factions. Moderate Peace Democrats who supported the war against the Confederacy, such as Horatio Seymour, were preaching the wisdom of a negotiated peace. After the Union victory at the Battle of Gettysburg in 1863, Moderate Peace Democrats proposed a negotiated peace that would secure Union victory. They believed this was the best course of action, because an armistice could finish the war without devastating the South. Radical peace Democrats known as Copperheads, such as Thomas H. Seymour, declared the war to be a failure and favored an immediate end to hostilities without securing Union victory. George B. McClellan vied for the presidential nomination. Additionally, friends of Horatio Seymour insisted on placing his name before the convention, which was held in Chicago, Illinois, on August 29-31, 1864. But on the day before the organization of that body, Horatio Seymour announced positively that he would not be a candidate. Since the Democrats were divided by issues of war and peace, they sought a strong candidate who could unify the party. The compromise was to nominate pro-war General George B. McClellan for president and anti-war representative George H. Pendleton for vice president. McClellan, a war Democrat, was nominated over the Copperhead Thomas H. Seymour. Pendleton, a close associate of the Copperhead Clement Vallandigham, balanced the ticket, since he was known for having strongly opposed the Union war effort. The convention adopted a peace platform, a platform McClellan personally rejected. McClellan supported the continuation of the war and restoration of the Union, but the party platform, written by Vallandigham, opposed this position. Topic. Radical Democracy Party nomination Topic. Radical Democracy Party candidates gallery Topic. Radical Democracy Party vice presidential candidates gallery The Radical Democracy Convention assembled in Ohio with delegates arriving on May 29, 1864. The New York Times reported that the hall which the convention organizers had planned to use had been double-booked by an opera troupe. 
Almost all delegates were instructed to support Fremont, with a major exception being the New York delegation, which was composed of war Democrats who supported Ulysses S. Grant. Various estimates of the number of delegates were reported in the press. The New York Times reported 156 delegates, but the number generally reported elsewhere was 350 delegates. The delegates came from 15 states and the District of Columbia. They adopted the name, Radical Democracy Party. A supporter of Grant was appointed chairman. The platform was passed with little discussion, and a series of resolutions that bogged down the convention proceedings were voted down decisively. The convention nominated Fremont for president, and he accepted the nomination on June 4, 1864. In his letter, he stated that he would step aside if the National Union Convention would nominate someone other than Lincoln. John Cochran was nominated for vice president. Topic. General election The 1864 election was the first time since 1812 that a presidential election took place during a war. For much of 1864, Lincoln himself believed he had little chance of being re-elected. Confederate forces had triumphed at the Battle of Mansfield, the Battle of the Crater, the Battle of Bryce's Cross Roads, the Battle of Kennesaw Mountain and the Battle of Cold Harbor. In addition, the war was continuing to take a very high toll in terms of casualties with campaigns such as Grant's Overland Campaign and the perceived lack of progress. The prospect of a long and bloody war started to make the idea of peace at all cost offered by the Copperheads look more desirable. Because of this, McClellan was thought to be a heavy favorite to win the election. Unfortunately for Lincoln, Fremont's campaign got off to a good start. However, several political and military events eventually made Lincoln's re-election inevitable. In the first place, the Democrats had to confront the severe internal strains within their party at the Democratic National Convention. The political compromises made at the Democratic National Convention were contradictory and made McClellan's efforts to campaign seem inconsistent. Secondly, the Democratic National Convention influenced Fremont's campaign. Fremont was appalled at the Democratic platform, which he described as union with slavery. After three weeks of discussions with Cochran and his supporters, Fremont withdrew from the race in September 1864. In his statement, Fremont declared that winning the Civil War was too important to divide the Republican vote. Although he still felt that Lincoln was not going far enough, the defeat of McClellan was of the greatest necessity. General Cochran, who was a war Democrat, agreed and withdrew with Fremont. On September 23, 1864 Fremont also brokered a political deal in which Lincoln removed U.S. Postmaster General Montgomery Blair from office, and on September 24 Abraham Lincoln relieved Blair of his duty as Postmaster General. McClellan's chances of victory faded after Fremont withdrew from the presidential race. Lastly, with the fall of Atlanta on September 2, there was no longer any question that a Union military victory was inevitable and close at hand. In the end, the Union Party mobilized the full strength of both the Republicans and the War Democrats under the its slogan, Don't change horses in the middle of a stream. It was energized as Lincoln made emancipation the central issue, and state Republican parties stressed the perfidy of the Copperheads. Topic. Results. Because eleven southern states had declared secession from the Union and formed the Confederate States of America, only 25 states participated in the election. Three new states participated for the first time, Kansas, West Virginia, and Nevada. The reconstructed portions of Louisiana and Tennessee chose presidential electors, although Congress did not count their votes. McClellan won just three states, Kentucky, Delaware, and his home state of New Jersey. Lincoln won in every state he carried in 1860 except New Jersey, and also carried a state won four years earlier by Stephen Douglas Missouri, one carried by John C. Breckinridge Maryland, and all three newly admitted states Kansas, Nevada and West Virginia. Altogether, 212 electoral votes were counted in Congress for Lincoln, more than enough to win the presidency even if all of the states in rebellion had participated. Lincoln was highly popular with soldiers and they in turn recommended him to their families back home. The following states allowed soldiers to cast ballots, California, Kansas, Kentucky, Maine, Michigan, Rhode Island, and Wisconsin. 
Out of the 40,247 Army votes cast, Lincoln received 30,503 and McClellan 9,201 with the rest 543 votes scattering 1.3%. Only soldiers from Kentucky gave McClellan a majority of their votes, and he carried the Army vote in the state by a vote of 2,823 to 1,194 of the 1,129 counties making returns, Lincoln won in 728 while McClellan carried 400 one county .1 in Iowa split evenly between Lincoln and McClellan. This was the last election when the Republicans won Maryland until 1896. Source Popular Vote, Lape, David. 1864 Presidential Election Results. Dave Lape's Atlas of U.S. Presidential Elections. Retrieved July 27, 2005. Source Electoral Vote. Electoral College Box Scores 1789-1996. National Archives and Records Administration. Retrieved July 31, 2005. A. The states in rebellion did not participate in the election of 1864. B. The electors from Tennessee and Louisiana were rejected. Had they not been rejected, Lincoln would have garnered 229 electoral votes out of a total of 250. C. One elector from Nevada did not vote. Topic geography of results Topic Cartographic gallery Topic Results by state source Data from Walter Dean Burnham, Presidential Ballots, 1836-1892 Johns Hopkins University Press, 1955 pp. 247-57. Source Popular Vote, Lape, David. 1864 Presidential Election Results. Dave Lape's Atlas of U.S. Presidential Elections. Retrieved July 27, 2005. Source Electoral Vote, Electoral College Box Scores 1789-1996. National Archives and Records Administration. Retrieved July 31, 2005. Topic states with close margins of victory States in red were won by Republican Abraham Lincoln, states in blue were won by Democrat George B. McClellan. Below is the state where the margin of victory was under 1%. This closely won state totaled 33 electoral votes, New York 0.9% below are the states where the margin of victory was under 5%. These closely won states totaled 35 electoral votes, Connecticut 2.8% 6 electoral votes Pennsylvania 3.5% 26 electoral votes Delaware 3.6% 3 electoral votes Topic See also American election campaigns in the 19th century Electoral history of Abraham Lincoln History of the United States 1849-1865 Second inauguration of Abraham Lincoln Third party system United States House elections, 18 1864 United States Senate elections, 1864 topic Footnotes topic Further reading Balsamo, Larry T. We Cannot Have Free Government Without Elections, Abraham Lincoln and the Election of 1864, Journal of the Illinois State Historical Society 181-99. Dudley, Harold M. The Election of 1864, Mississippi Valley Historical Review, Volume 18, No. 4 March 1932. PP 500 to 18 in JSTOR Fahrenbacher, Don E. The Making of a Myth: Lincoln and the Vice Presidential Nomination in 1864. Civil War History 41.4, 1995, 273 to 290. Long, David E. Jewel of Liberty: Abraham Lincoln's Re-election and the End of Slavery, 1994. Merrill, Lewis Taylor, General Benjamin F. Butler in the Presidential Campaign of 1864. Mississippi Valley Historical Review 33, March 1947, 537 to 70, in JSTOR. Nelson, Larry E. Bullets, Ballots and Rhetoric: Confederate Policy for the United States Presidential Contest of 1864. University of Alabama Press, 1980. Alan Nevins, Ordeal of the Union: The War for the Union, Volume 8, 1971. Newman, Leonard. Opposition to Lincoln in the Elections of 1864, Science and Society, Vol. 8, No. 4 Fall 1944, pp. 305-27. In JSTOR. Philip Shaw Paludin, The Presidency of Abraham Lincoln University Press of Kansas, 1994 pp. 274-93. 
James G. Randall and Richard N. Current. Lincoln the President, Last Full Measure. Volume 4 of Lincoln the President, 1955. Vorenberg, Michael. The Deformed Child, Slavery and the Election of 1864. Civil War History 2147 240-57. Jack Waugh, Re-Electing Lincoln, The Battle for the 1864 Presidency 1998. White, Jonathan W. Canvassing the Troops, the Federal Government and the Soldiers' Right to Vote. Civil War History 2004 50 3, 317 White, Jonathan W. Emancipation, the Union Army, and the Re-Election of Abraham Lincoln Baton Rouge, LSU Press, 2014. Winther, Oscar O. The Soldier Vote in the Election of 1864. New York and History Pages and do 1944-25-440-58. External links United States Presidential Election of 1864 at Encyclopædia Britannica Lape, Dave. 1864 Presidential Election, Home States. Dave Lape's Atlas of U.S. Presidential Elections. Retrieved the 11th of January 2009. 1864 popular vote by counties. 1864 state by state popular results. Transcript of the 1864 Democratic Party platform. Harper's Weekly overview. More from Harper's Weekly. How close was the 1864 election? Michael Shepard, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Abraham Lincoln, a resource guide from the Library of Congress Presidential Election of 1864, a resource guide from the Library of Congress Election of 1864 in Counting the Votes